get into it. Coach Colin here. I never thought I would really care to ask this question, but where is Joe Biden? Tucker Carlson and his guests have some theories. Oh, man, this is very, very at first when I first heard this clip, I was like, OK, whatever, you know, you know theories. And then I saw another clip from the Tucker Carlson interview that I'm talking about, and he's reading something from the desk of Charlie Kirk. So Charlie Kirk's intel says a very wild. Oh, man, I, I can't wait for you guys to see that. But then also I saw a couple of clips where Joe is calling in to Kamala's rallies or whatever she's doing via phone. And then it all just started turning. I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Where's Joe? Where's Joe? I mean, listen, we can't have the theory that Kanye West and all sorts of other people get switched out or they disappear or this or that and not have that same type of energy for Joe Biden. Where is Joe? I was saying before when he got sick, I was like, if this sickness is even real, this is a serious issue for someone his age and in his condition. He is not a spry 9,700 year old. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> that's a bad joke. Bad joke. Bad taste. Bad taste. Listen to this. Listen to this, though. And then suddenly I'm getting phone calls from my team saying, hey, Joe Biden has just dropped out. I'm like, what do you mean he dropped out? Is there an Oval Office address? He's not in the Oval Office. He's supposed to be in Rehoboth. This very suspicious letter, which is signed by Joe Biden in a signature that is different from all of his other signatures, gets put out. And it says that he is dropping out of the race. It doesn't cite a reason. It doesn't cite any specifics as to what's going on. Doesn't endorse Kamala Harris in the letter itself. And it's just posted to his Twitter account, just X. So it's posted up there and we don't hear from him. We don't see him. We don't see Jill. We don't see any of the senior staff. His senior staffers are the ones informing the cabinet after this. So Biden himself doesn't even call his own cabinet to talk to them. So it's 1115 on Monday. Yes. And as of right, and by the time this is posted, it may change, but we have not heard from Biden. We have not heard from Biden or seen Biden personally sinned, no proof of life, since Wednesday at this event in Las Vegas where they pulled him out because he was diagnosed with COVID. Nothing. There's been no sighting of him at all? As, as of today, I haven't seen anything. I haven't heard anything. We get all these reports from someone uh, familiar with the president's thinking, familiar with Joe Biden's, uh, you know, thought processes, someone who claims that they just saw Biden. But no. There's no Biden. There's no evidence of Biden. There's no sighting of Biden. There's no, there's no Biden taking a selfie saying, saying, hey, America, thanks for the memories. Nothing. Not a single piece of the it. The closest we have, I think, is his brother Frank coming out to CBS yesterday, but not on camera. Right. Telling the reporter, you know, I love my brother. And for whatever time he has left, yep. I'll be glad to be with him. And then the Biden family apparently comes out and says, well, actually, like, Frank's an alcoholic. You can't listen to anything he says. Yeah, that's crazy Frank. And he hasn't talked to his brother in weeks. But that being said, even if he did talk to his brother weeks ago and there was a medical condition that raises to that level, then then we don't know. Look, that being said, though, what, what he lines up, what he said, Frank, about Biden, whatever time he has left, that actually lines up with something that I heard from a, a well-placed uh, White House official, not as high as the inner circle or anything like that, but said something about Biden asking questions about, you know, what is it like to have dementia? What, what is it like to lose your mind and realizing that there's no, there's no future for you? Your future is that, is your legacy, of course, but your future personally is you're going to be confined to a bed and you're going to wake up and maybe not remember, not recognize people's faces, this type of thing. And that he was asking those questions. And so perhaps when he talked to his brother, he said something similar. But it's Monday. We're in the middle of two wars and we're in the middle of these wars. We're oh, yeah. paying for these wars. Americans are fighting in these wars um, right now. And there may be a third war with Iran approaching quickly. That's my read on it. And there's no proof that Joe Biden even exists right now. There's nothing. This is even Khrushchev. So when, when the Soviets wanted to get rid of Khrushchev in 1964, 
he was on vacation and he's down in, I guess it's in the Republic of Georgia now in Abkhazia and he's on the beach and Brezhnev and all the guys get together in the Kremlin and they say, okay, we're, gonna, we're done with this guy. He's old. We're pushing him out. This is, they go, they're, they're like, we're not going to wait for death of Stalin on him. We're just going to go in and decide we're making the move. They get with the KGB because their guy, Brezhnev had already kind of maneuvered everything. So his guys were in power and they go, they run the full unhumans playbook on him and say, you're done. They have him come back when he flies back, and they say we have a we have a we have a meeting to discuss agricultural reports, you know. And they come in, KGB intercepts Khrushchev at the airport. They bring him in, and they hand the letter in front of him, and they say, "This is the letter. You're going to sign it." And Khrushchev at that point goes, "You know what? I'm old. Um, I always kind of knew this day was going to come." So he just goes along with it. He just totally lays out. They put him under house arrest for the rest of his life. He's never seen or heard from again. He gets like a memoir that comes. But out. that's the Soviet Union. I mean, this is a this is oh a yeah, free, a no, free and transparent nothing, country nothing owned by like its that, own citizens. Whatever, right. go on here. I mean, so you sort Tucker, of that's a crazy other thing. But what's so bewildering to me is that nobody mentions it. I mean, I go go look at the media right now. If Wired.com, it's a conspiracy theory to say that this was a coup. This was there's this whole hagiography that's going on right now of oh, it was this uh, tense decision that Biden was grappling with it. But we it. don't know any of that. Oh, of course we do. We've been informed by people close to his thinking <laughs> that that uh, that this is exactly how it went down. And of course, none of us were in the room. None of us got to see any of this, but we're all told, no, this, this is exactly what happened. Joe Biden isn't out there himself telling us that any of it's happened. And as a, actually, as of the time of the recording, we haven't even heard from Kamala Harris yet, who we're told there isn't anything physically wrong with her. So why isn't Kamala coming out or Jill coming out or anyone coming out and just talking to the American people and at least giving us some semblance of a story as to what's going on. As someone who's thought for the last few years that this was not a democracy, it's an oligarchy, um, you know, biz, the real business conducted in the shadows, shielded from public scrutiny by lies and classification laws. Um, you know, I've thought all that for a while because it's clearly true. But to see that all revealed, they just took the mask off. So what... what so, since this has been recorded, Kamala has come out. She has been talking, and she has, I don't know, what do you call these press conferences, rallies, whatever, what have you. Uh, Kamala's not going to bring out a huge crowd, especially on such short, short notice. So, it's just like a few people, and it's her, and, you know, they're all clapping and well-wishing and all that stuff. But, but she has come out. But Jill, Hunter, uh, Biden family, Biden himself have not been seen it's very very interesting very very interesting listen I, I just gotta say it before i go on to the next clip is it not clear that trump should just be the president and i know hey, listen i got a bias i like the guy you know i want to see the guy as president i get it but at this point it's like oh no it's gonna be come out like wait, what are we what are we doing what are we doing you know this is like when a when a husband and wife are just fighting over dumb stuff. They're just fighting over Tupperware, and it's like, what are we doing? We don't got to do this. <laughs> listen, listen. You can put you can put your Kamala wherever you want. Put your Kamala in the drawers, whatever. Okay, and the Trump's just gonna stay out here. <laughs> the Trump's like the blender. It's useful. Use that thing every day. Kamala's like the big Tupperware, and it's like, you only use that for so many things, you know? And we're having this argument like, no, I want the huge Tupperware on the kitchen table. It's like, it doesn't need to be there. Get this go inside the drawer. We don't have to do this. We don't got to fight like this. This is nonsense. It's going to be Kamala. It's, 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 it's getting so ridiculous. And I know this is not my bias speaking. You could just look. Just look at what they talk about. I've heard her talk about nothing but reproductive rights for a year, year and a half. That's all she ever talks about. She she can't talk about the border. She can't talk about inflation. She can't talk about the economy. She can't talk to world leaders. What are we what are we talking about here? I want to I want a, a free and fair election. But it seems like Biden is nowhere to be found. And the fact that they're saying now it's Kamala and now all the all the people around are just like switching to Kamala so quickly. 
it just it's exactly what Tucker just said. It's like a mask off moment where they're like, <laughs> it's whoever we say, whoever we say, that's who it is. Yeah. And if you don't believe in it, you're racist. They're back to that now. They're like, <laughs> she's black like her or you're racist. And it's like, oh, God. All right. Fine. Here's another clip from the Tucker Carlson podcast. I could not find it in the podcast, but he does speak about this. I might not have it loaded at the right point, but let's just uh, check this out. This is from Charlie Kirk. The official story was that Biden's trip was cut short last week due to COVID. However, according to this source, U.S. Secret Service informed Las Vegas Metro that there was an emergency situation involving Joe Biden and to close necessary streets so that POTUS could be transported immediately to University Medical. Then mysteriously, there was a stand down order and the Secret Service informed local Vegas PD that they were going to medevac POTUS to Johns Hopkins, which they presume meant fly him back east as soon as possible. Apparently, the rumor mill in the police department was that Joe Biden was dying or already dead, possibly. Given that Joe Biden has been out of public sight for days and dropped out of the race via an X post and his brother James indicated health was a factor, I'm beginning to grow more curious if COVID or something else has been more serious than reported. Clearly something is going on here. I don't know what it is. I know it's hallmark, which is secrecy. Secrecy is the hallmark of lying. So they're lying. Well, I'm sure Las Vegas Metro would be just as forthcoming as they were <laughs> during the uh, <laughs> during the, during the October shooting. Yeah, in the, the worst mass shooting in American worst, history. Which, so that that is some information that they got from Charlie Kirk. And, and I remember when I saw that, I was like, yeah, maybe, you know, but then I started seeing stuff like this. It's like as soon as people start questioning things, they're like, oh, what do you mean? Joe's right here. Joe's right here. Listen. And we just announced. All right. Well, Dana, that was allegedly Joe Biden. Yes. It could have just been a recording made a month ago. AI is really improving. It's incredible. They just went to the phone and said, <laughs> give impressive. me Joe with the coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what they did. No, I'm kidding, of course. That definitely did sound like the president. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he just all that stuff off the top of his head. He seems so strong. He definitely was not just <laughs> reading that. Right. No. And we see, I believe that. The first gentleman. So, of course, we have to be thinking about that. Um, I think that that's proof of life. allies, our troops with the campaign. He also sounded like he was still campaigning. Yeah. Like he thinks he's going to get back on the road. But I have to wonder, like with all the Democrats who said that. they Ridiculous. It doesn't even have the part that I wanted. So sorry about that, guys. Here, let's listen to this part and I'll find that clip again. Ridiculous. Oh, get it together, guys. Come on. It is so good to hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call and we've been talking every day. Um, you probably you guys heard it from Doug's voice to hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call and we've been talking every day. Um, you probably you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like family to us. And we do everybody here does. It's neutral. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were still there. You're not going anywhere, Joe. Oh, I'm watching you, kid. I'm watching you, kid. I love you. I love our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call. And we've been... That right there is what everybody is uh, commenting on. Because it sounds like she's saying, as you see right above the uh, picture there, Joe, I know you're still on the record... On the call... It sounds like she was about to say the recording because 100% if anyone was going to mess that up and say something crazy like that, it would be Kamala Harris. A hundred percent. I mean, without question, <laughs> without question, it would be her saying that type of thing. So that's what people are really leaning towards. They're starting to hear these recordings. Or, you know, sorry, they're starting to hear Biden via phone and no one understands why they're hearing him via phone and they're not actually hearing or seeing him himself. It's very easy for him to just do this via, you know, Skype, via Zoom, via, you know, Facebook uh, Messenger, uh, you know, iPhone Messenger. There's so many different ways that he could do this here let me just try and find this really quick biden via phone there's so many ways 
Yeah, there you go on phone. Let's see if this is it. And so I want to say hello to Kamala. If she can hear me, I know she's going to be speaking shortly. And I want to say to the team, embrace her. She's the best. I want to call today to thank everybody, everybody in this effort. I know yesterday's news was surprising and uh, it was hard for you to hear, but it was the right thing to do. It's, uh, it, I, I know it's hard because you poured your heart and soul into me to help us win this thing, help me get this nomination, help me win the nomination, and then go on to win the, win the, the presidency. But, you know, you're an amazing team, but we've got a great, great, I think we made the right decision. I know how hard you've worked, how many sacrifices you've made. And so many of you, so many of you uprooted your lives for me and the kind of commitment few people make for anything these days. But you made it. And I've been honored and humbled. I mean, this is from the bottom of my heart. My word is abiding that for all you've done for me and my family. And you, we built the best campaign in organ, organization in history. I've been doing this. I, I always kid and say I know I'm only 40, but uh, I've been around a long time. I don't know of a better campaign organization, grassroots campaign. You know, we have over 230 offices opened. We have over 2,000 paid staff. And we have literally several thousand volunteers on a regular basis, thousands of them. And they've been relentless and tireless in reaching out and contacting voters. The leadership of this campaign has been amazing. Gentlemen. When has he ever sounded like that? Like, let's be real. You know what I mean? When has he ever sounded like that? That was a minute and 30 of just crisp, no stuttering, just barely needed to take a breath. And you're telling me he got sick and then speaks better? I don't know. It's just it's it's very, very interesting just for comparison. I mean, and that's the thing. It's yeah, AI is getting better. It is. You guys know I don't like AI, but it is getting much better. Joe Rogan. AI. Oh, of course, actual clips. No, I want to hear a Joe Rogan AI. When you're on Instagram, you hear Joe Rogan AI stuff all the time. Let's hear this one. This is from a year ago. All right, so this is what they were doing a year ago. No, that's copyrighted, dummies. So what's wrong with people on on YouTube, learn how to do this stuff. You can't just upload anything. How does it go again? I don't know. What's it's saying? better to, to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war or something like that. But you know how to fight. Did that come in handy while you were in there? Absolutely. Knowing how to fight and having the discipline that comes with martial arts training um, definitely helped me. I didn't go looking for trouble, but if it came boxing and boxing. Mm, yeah. However, I definitely see the value there is a Bugatti. Important for me to continue communicating with my fans and letting grateful to be back but it's also a reminder of everything that happened yeah wow i'm just trying to focus on moving forward you know but but it's still islam is about it's like any religion or ideology there's always going to be ex that's an interesting point it's definitely a different vibe than what we usually catch at these types of events yeah for sure and let me tell you something you see what i mean that's a year ago right that's a year ago it improves really fast really really fast so if you heard a conversation between Joe and, you know, whatever guest that was just straight up AI, now they're getting to the point where they have inflection in the voice, where it's not just straight monotone. They're starting to get to the point where, you know, you could have somebody yell, you can have them whisper. They're yet they're 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 coming along really well. So let's just listen to some more of Joe. Listen. I'm Ali Dillon, Julie Quinn, Michael Tyler, Rob Flaherty, Rufus on raising money and so many more. You built this team, you brought them together, you brought us together, you've inspired them, and, uh, and, and you've done what leaders do. Now, now we got to, you know, the name has changed at the top of the ticket, but the mission hasn't changed at all. And by the way, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be out there in the campaign with her, with Kamala. I'm going to be working like hell, both as a sitting president, getting legislation passed, as well as in campaigning. You know, what we still need to save is democracy. And Trump, Trump is still a danger to the community. He's a danger to the nation. And uh, just, just ask my foreign policy colleagues, my counterparts, and other people around the world and at home. Look, so I'm hoping you'll give every bit of your heart and soul that you gave to me to Kamala. And, uh, and, and I want you to know, I won't be on the ticket, but I'm still going to be fully, fully engaged. I've got six months left of my presidency. 
I'm determined to get as much done as I possibly can, both foreign policy and domestic policy. Keep lowering costs for families. Continue to speak out on guns and child care, elder care, prescription drugs and climate. Climate still is the existential threat that we face. And we have if we don't if we don't win this thing, it's all in jeopardy. And we got to keep working for an end to the war in Gaza. I'll be working very closely with the with the Israelis and with the Palestinians to try to work out how we can get the Gaza war to end and Middle East peace and get all those hostages home. I think we're on a verge of being able to do that. And we got to keep our alliances together. It's critically important. It took a while for me to build these alliances. Most of these are my colleagues have acknowledged that, but it's critically, critically important for our safety and security. And I know uh, I'll be doing whatever Kamala wants me or needs me to do in addition. So let me be real clear. We're still fighting in this fight together. I'm not you see that part right there where he was saying something and he just went right into the next sentence? I know I probably sound crazy. I know, I know, I know. But just hear me out. Wants me or needs me to do an addition. So let me be real clear. We're still fighting in this fight together. I'm not going anywhere. And I want you to know I've always, you've always had my back. And I promise you, I will always have your back. And I'm anxious to, for you all to hear from Kamala. So thank I don't know. I don't know. That's that's the thing with AI. That's the thing with via phone. And then you start thinking about AI. Because again, why not just do it? Why not just be on a teleport? Why not just be on a on a screen? Just, hey guys, what's up? It's me, it's Joe. I'm here with Jill. Like, why not just do that? People are constantly doing interviews via Zoom. And they're doing them great. And it sounds great. And it gives people a chance to actually see you and see what you're up to. The fact that he's not doing that, you know, you, you can't really have an argument of uh, maybe he doesn't have access. He's the president. And even if he wasn't the president, still a millionaire. Like, he has access to do this. He has the ability to do this. He has the people around him to make sure that he can do this. But for some reason, he's not. I don't know. I don't know. All I want to know is where is Joe Biden? You know? That's it. That's it. Could you imagine? Could you imagine there's a world where... He's in some room, you know, and they're like, here's the, just like that guy was telling that story. They're like, here's the letter, Joe, sign it. He's like, I'm not signing it. He goes, what I do is for the American people. You're never going to, you're never going to take me down. I'm never going to, no. Ah, ah. And he's fighting in some room. They're like, you're going to sign it. You're going to, you're going to sign it. <laughs> he's like, I got to call Donald. Donald. Oh. He's my only hope. Donald, please. You're my vice president. I'm kidding. <laughs> but could you imagine? Can you imagine he actually got through to Donald? Donald, they're going to do something to me. I do. I want to make you the president right now. Call just cuts off. Doo. Nah, you know, that's not true. Trump would be all over that. He'd be like, I got a call. I got a call. He said I'm president. I don't care what anybody says. It's recorded. He said I'm president. Nah, nah, nah. I'm kidding around. I'm just getting silly. But it is an interesting theory. Where is Joe and are we going to see him anytime soon? I do not know the answer to that question. I am honestly hoping we do. Because if we don't, it spells out something so nefarious. It was always fun to make the joke like, oh, they're just weekend at Bernie and this guy. You know, they're just bringing them around like weekends at Bernie's. And that's a real funny joke. <laughs> but but what this would spell out would be something so nefarious. Shockingly nefarious. Something that you couldn't just be like, well, you know, just make sure you vote for the right guy. It would no, no, no. It'd be a different situation. It'd be such a different situation. Anyways, guys, I'm just going to leave you on that light note. <laughs> like, subscribe. Turn on the notifications. And other than that, I'm out.